This is Ask a Fee-Only Financial Planner Podcast, episode number seven, brought to you by AIO Financial, a fee-only financial planning firm at AIO, AIOfinancial.com. And fee-only means there's no commissions, no product sales. In this podcast, I answer your financial questions. I provide personal financial knowledge so you can manage your own financial situation. I'm Bill Holiday. Thank you for joining me on this episode. I'm going to be talking about Social Security, and the question is how can I maximize my Social Security benefit? Um, so Social Security, uh, it's paid from the, what, 6.2% tax on employee wages, 12.4% on self-employment earnings usually get split between the employer and employee, but if you own your own business, you get to pay the whole bit. Um, to get eligible for Social Security, you need to complete 40 credits or have 40 credits. And one credit, the most you can get is four credits a year. And to get a credit you need to earn in 2015, $1,220 in wages or self-employment income. So in a year, uh, what is that, $4,880. If you earn at least, four, you know, almost $5,000, you'll get your four credits for that year. Uh, and you need 10 years or 40 credits to be eligible for Social Security. Um, the benefits that you get. So they calculate your benefit based on the highest 35 earning years. The maximum earnings they consider is about $110,000. Anything above that you're not paying Social Security on, anything above that you're not getting credit for when they're calculating your Social Security benefit. So the maximum, I mean your highest 35 years get average together to come up with that benefit. Uh, normal retirement age, so you'll get these statements telling you when your normal retirement is, when full retirement is. And the, the benefit of waiting till full retirement, or one of the biggest benefits is, if you start taking your payment before full retirement age, and you have earnings, and it's a pretty low number, I wonder if I have it in here. Working after retirement. Yeah. If the earnings are more than 15720 so let's just say $16,000, you have to pay back to Social Security $1 for every two you earn in Social Security. $1 for every $2 you earn above that $15,000. So, so let's just say you made $20,000 you're going to have to pay $2,000 back because there's $4,000 above the 16. You have to pay $2,000 back to Social Security. I mean, that's your penalty. So if you're, that's only for 20000 If you make 30000 then you're going to have to pay 7000 back. And it kind of defeats the purpose of taking it early. But if you're making less than 16000 you have cash flow issues, you want to take it early. Maybe you're worried about your life expectancy or even the life expectancy of Social Security. Lots of people take it early, but that's just a, a consideration. Or the, the biggest consideration, I think, is that uh, if you're still wor er, working, you're going to get penalized. Um, and I think before, if a worker reaches full retirement, during the year, it's one in three gets returned. But... Uh, in general, if you're making over 16000 it's better to delay till, or you're going to get penalized. Not it's better, it depends on your situation, but just be aware there's a penalty. Normal retirement age, um, if you're born after 1960, it's 67 years old. And then it ladders down if, if you're born before... 1937, the full re retirement age is 65. And then it's this, uh, you have to extrapolate in between if you're born in between there. So if you want to retire early, here's the other penalty. You can start taking Social, Social Security as early as 62, no matter what your normal retirement age is. 
but there's a penalty. It gets reduced five-ninths of one percent, just about half a percent for every month that you begin taking the benefits before full retirement age. Um, and so if you're, just as an example, um, if, you're six, if your full reti retirement age is 65 and you start taking the benefits at 62, that's 36 months early, you get multiply that by the half or the five ninths, that's 20%. Your benefits are reduced by about 20%. And so you'll get 80% of that full retirement benefit. Uh, you know, that's another argument for delaying as well. If you feel that you'll have a decent uh, life expectancy, you feel comfortable, Social Security will be around, and you're not running up credit cards to make ends meet, you know, if you can if you can make it till delaying it, makes a lot of sense to wait at least till full retirement age, and then you can delay even further. And you get an increase for workers born in 1943 and after, the benefit increases 8% per year for every year you delay beyond your full retirement age, up to a maximum at age 70. So it's a pretty healthy increase and we've done a bunch of calculations and in general if you if your life expectancy if you expect to live beyond your mid 80s then it makes sense to delay it um, you know it, it all depends on what assumptions you use what do you think you'll earn on that money that you're delaying using um, what do you what are you going to earn on the money that you if you take Social Security early and invest, you know, what, what could those earnings be? Um, but general um, assumptions, I guess pretty modest assumptions, well, we figure in your 80s, if you expect to live beyond that, it's nice to delay it. Um, and, you, you know, you can hedge your bets if you have a spouse. One of you could take it at full retirement and one delay. But... Um, in general, that, that's a pretty nice benefit because it's not only 8% a year that you delay. Those benefits increase with inflation. So, um, you know, they're constantly going up. It's pretty pretty good if you can hold off. There's a disability benefit, and then there is a spousal benefit. So there's family benefits um, involved. So you're... You're entitled to your Social Security benefit or half of your spouse's benefit. And if your spouse dies, you're entitled to the higher of the spouse or yours. So you could, and, it, and that's for a current spouse or for someone who's been married for 10 years and divorced and has not remarried. So if you marry someone for 10 years, get a divorce, marry someone for 10 years, get a divorce, are currently married with someone, there could be three people claiming half of your Social Security amount. It doesn't affect you at all. You'll still get your full benefit, but there could be other people getting half of your benefit uh, or half of the value of your full retirement benefit. Um, the, let's see, children under eight, if there's disabilities, there's, there's a few other small benefits. There's a death benefit there, this is very small. I wanted to talk about taxation real briefly. Right now, up to 85% of your benefits can be taxed when you're drawing those benefits. Depends on your income, it could be less, it could be zero of it's taxed, but up to 85% can be taxed. So file and suspending. This is one a lot of people think miss taking advantage of. That you can continue to work, you can file, and suspend taking your benefits. So that the voluntary suspension will let your benefits grow. And a spouse can claim half of that benefit. Um, so for your spouse to be claiming half of that benefit you both need to be full retirement age. Um, they can always, th there's other ways this can work. You can take your benefit and then later on at full retirement 
take half of your spouses so you can tar start taking yours earlier um, and then get your spouse, ex-spouse, deceased spouse, spouse's benefit at, at full retirement. Um, so it's worth looking at what your benefit is, what your spouse's benefit is, look at what half of that spouse's is, and adjust how you're taking it. You might not want to wait till fall, or you might want to delay yours, take half of your spouse's. Um, yeah. So here's an example. Husband and wife, they're both full retirement age. And let's say it's age 66. Covered by Social Security earnings because they have their 40 hours. One of the partners, let's say the husband's monthly benefit is 1400 The wife's benefit is 1000 per month. And that increases with inflation on until they die. The husband files for the benefits. The wife can claim the spouse's benefit of 700 50% of the husband, continue working, contribute towards her own Social Security benefits because they're averaging 35 highest years, so it'll keep increasing. She'll be still paying taxes on it. In age 70, she can file for her own retirement benefit that has increased and is now, uh, because she's delayed it, 1320 a month. So she's getting kind of that free 700 a month of half of her spouse's until she takes her full at... Um, 1320 her spouse her spouse's benefit stops for her because now her retirement benefit is higher another little thing you can do is start over so let's say you start pulling your benefits and your situation's changed you suddenly get a great job or you decide you decide you want to um, delay your taking the Social Security. You really didn't need it. Or maybe you get, I don't know what the situation, you get married and suddenly you have enough money that you'd like to delay that benefit. You can repay what you've taken and start that clock over. So let's say at 62 you were drawing and then at 64 you say, hey, wait, I didn't want to be drawing. I want to, because of my new situation or for whatever reason, I want to actually delay and start taking a bigger amount later. You can request, uh, you can file a request for withdrawal of application. Yeah, pay back everything, um, and then you can start taking them again, or you can delay, and you're back into the system. Um, Social Security does not charge interest on the repayment. All right, that was pretty quick, but I think we got the basics out of the way. Let me know if you have any questions. Leave comments. I'd be glad to, to go through this slower, look at different scenarios. Uh, let me know what's of interest to you. Um, that was episode seven. Next episode, I will let you know. I'm going to be talking about same-sex couple benefits. And they have been changing. Um, thank you for listening to Ask a Fee Only Financial Planner podcast, video cast. Uh, we provide personal financial knowledge so you can manage your own financial situation. I'm Bill Holiday, and this is sponsored by AIO Financial Fee Only Financial Planners at AIOfinancial.com. You could visit, um, you know, our Facebook, leave comments, Twitter, we have some. I don't respond to those, but you can uh, look at our feed there. Uh, but mostly, the best way to contact me is at my email, bill at aiofinancial.com. You can also call 520-325-0769. Love to hear more questions, comments, feedback, anything you got. Thanks a lot. Take care.